I know you've all been anxiously awaiting a decent turbocharger update for Johnny X R1025R that's getting a new turbo. Today we got a good one, not quite finished yet, but they've remanufactured some of the pieces to make them fit just a little bit better. And we're going to examine what it would look like to put together a kit like this for you guys to buy. Let's get started. Tim's kind of been giving us a hard time about not giving him some updates, so we thought maybe we should show you all what's taking so long to get this thing together. Um, if this was just a one-off project as it intended to be in the beginning, um, we'd be done by now, with the exception of a part that we're still waiting on. Parts have been a bit of a problem to get, get manufactured and or get shipped properly. So I um, thought we would just bring the parts in, show you what we've been doing, and we're very close to making this thing run again. Um, however, we do still uh, need an actuator for this thing. But I know Tim wants some updates and the viewers would like to see what we're doing. So I thought we'd jump into what have we been doing. So as you can see, there's a lot of pieces here that are test pieces. Um, trial, air, don't, don't have the right pieces made yet. Um, so you gotta improvise and deal with things as they come along. So the last video that we shot, we were measuring the position of the turbocharger relationship to the valve cover on how to position the oil drain. Well, when we talked about that, um, we marked it and we knew that this baffle was going to be a problem um, after we checked the center line of everything on there. So we did have to end up welding the fitting into the side of the valve cover. So you can see the angle. So we engineered a piece. Um, Dusty and Gary in the machine shop figured out the angle of the valve cover, the angle that it needed to meet back with the turbo. Designed this aluminum piece to be welded into here with a pipe at an angle into it as well so everything would line up. So that takes a little bit of time of measuring stuff. And We sent Tim a video of uh, Dusty and the digitizing arm measuring different points on everything to locate it so we knew where things were whenever we brought it back in and put it on the computer. So let's start with one of the first pieces that we ended up coming up with is the bolt to the manifold to bolt the turbocharger on top of it. This has made a little bit of a revision since the very first piece to give us some more clearance for tightening bolts around the oil drain um, and around the valve cover itself. This was um, going from four bolts to three bolts and trying to maintain enough wall thickness in here so this doesn't burn out um, which was the necessity for a small high torque nut to go on the stud that's on here that would go on there we'll just mock this up kind of uh, like it would be on the tractor <clears throat> just so you kind of get an idea of what's going on here we also had repositioned the turbocharger, so redrilled the exhaust housing to bolt it in in the proper location, orientated the compressor housing so that it will be repeatable. So we've positioned the turbocharger so that it'll line up on the intake manifold here. Got things a little out of proportion, but you can see that the oil drain flange that we've made on here also has a machined um, flat plate where we can weld a straight piece into it to get the angle that we need because that's all done on the CNC and therefore we can maintain the, the proper angle. And all of this extra work of trying to come up with how can we repeat this is driven by a lot of the uh, viewers wanting to know if there's going to be a kit made for this thing. Um, so we have spent a lot of extra time recording files, measuring things so that we know how to repeat it i.e. the position of the oil drain flange uh, on in the valve cover and in this. Obviously we're not at the right height here or this would line up better. So welded this in. We have the turbocharger drain flange. We have the pedestal. Aluminum elbow. Reducing hose. So this, you can see, what, see what's happening here if everything is at the right height. On the exhaust outlet of this, we started with this piece so we could run it until the, the water jet folks got our other pieces made. Um, this will bolt on to the back of this 
and that's where the exhaust pipe comes off of and goes down the tractor in its stock location. We didn't go through the side shield, we didn't go through the hood, um, but when we were running it without the side shields and without the hood, we did have the little Johnny stock piece on here yet so we could still run it and not smoke the radiator or anything else out of this thing. So We are waiting on um, the actuator to get here, but meanwhile we have a solid model of the actuator. Um, since we took all the data points off of the turbo, we were able to send the file out and have um, folks water jet this force. So it will mount on here, clamping the compressor housing with some standoff bolts on here then, two of those. The actuator will sit out here and operate the flapper on that. One of the other pieces that we made with the mock-up uh, was the exhaust pipe. So we took parts of the stock exhaust pipe, had a friend of ours bend, or get us some tubing uh, so we could make couplings, tacked everything together so this would go on the turbo and down the side of the tractor. Alright, so once we had the pipe fabbed up, and we sent it out to a tubing bender. That tubing bender then returned this pipe to us that fits on the tractor wonderfully. Uh, future kits, we will also have them weld the tab onto the uh, down pipe so that it will be ready to go into the box whenever it comes here. This one, we welded the tab on um, once we had everything on the tractor. So that's a little brief update of things that we've got um, finalized for the tractor. This will go on here and run straight back up to the air cleaner. We'll have our actuator sitting over here running this. Um, and then on top of the valve cover was the aluminum plate that we've made for the breather assembly that goes onto the top. Remove this plate here, put the o-ring in, the plate on, and the breather tube will run down the side of the engine. So this stuff is all ready to go, um, it'll be a matter of uh, getting the actuator on, get it adjusted for pressure, and get the thing put back on the tractor, hope to film that video shortly, and uh, be able to run this thing on the dyno, and then it can go back to Tim and he can play with it. Well it seems to me like they're almost complete. Looks like they're waiting on one more piece, that shouldn't be a big deal. Meanwhile, there's a few more items they need to work through before they can really get a kit ready. The biggest is just trying to understand how this can work with the EPA or with the government and those tier four regulations. One aspect is that in this case, we're not deleting or otherwise defeating any of the features on this particular engine, right? Because the, uh, that DPF and in the larger engines, DEF just doesn't apply to this engine. Um, so there, there shouldn't be an issue there. However, there's some other things to kind of work through on that. So we're not exactly sure this is ever going to be a kit, but they are proceeding at a pace that it might be. I don't know. I'm really excited about it either way. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I promise you the next update will be very soon and it'll be noisy if you know what I mean. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What do you think, Bullseye? Are you excited about that? Are you excited? Are you excited about that turbo? Huh? You got fur all over you?